Hey there gang, Mr. Spencer here. What we're gonna do today is talk about this idea of, of what forces are. We're gonna go over how to identify different kinds of forces and also how to label those. Now this is gonna be really important because what we're getting into here in our physics classes is talking about not only how things move, but why. And forces are the, the idea that, uh, that, that gets things going. So let's get going on this. What I wanna do today is go over three big ideas. First of all, we're going to define what a force is in terms of physics. We're going to go over some different kinds of forces. We're going to give some names to those forces and kind of separate those into what are called contact forces and at a distance forces. Last of all, we're going to start going over how to label these different forces using a certain kind of format that we're going to use a lot in this class. So, let's go here. So the very first thing is the idea of what a force is. So in physics, force is just, it's a push or a pull that's acting on an object. Um, when we're labeling forces, or sorry, when we're talking about uh, the, the units of force, we've got to remember force is a vector, all right? It has both magnitude, which is how much, it also has direction. So when we're talking about these vector forces, we're gonna measure those in units that are called Newtons. Now the, um, the, the, the unit or the, the symbol that we use for Newtons is a capital N. And what a Newton is, it's how much force, it's how much push or pull would be necessary to accelerate an object that has a mass of one kilogram at a rate of one meter per second every second. So this idea of, of Newtons here is uh, it, it's a, one of those combined forces or oh, what's the word? I'll come back to it. All right, so one Newton is the same as one kilogram times a meter per second per second. All right, so we've got these two different kinds of forces. You can have pushes and pulls that come from things that are contact or that, that are touching each other, but you can also have forces of objects that aren't touching. Those are called at a distance forces. Let's go through some of those. All right, so the very first one is what's called the applied force, okay? We use this one a lot, okay? The, the first, or it's, it's your generic everyday pushes and pulls, and the symbol that we use is right here, this F sub app. Now, that's what I use. It, if you go to a different classroom or have a different textbook, it might be different, but in our class, this is what we're going to use. All right. Along with the applied force, we have what's called the normal force. All right. This is another one that we use quite a bit. All right. The normal force is the support force of a surface. All right. And that support force is always acting perpendicular, okay, to that to that surface. The unit or the 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 <laughs> oh, it's been one of those days. All right, this is what we use, F sub N on this. Now let's, let's kind of go over this because this idea right here of the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface is really easy. So if I'm sitting in a chair, all right, so if, if this is me, if I'm sitting in a chair, all right, and this guy has a really, I don't, I don't know what he's doing there, but the support force is coming from the chair, all right, it's that, force that the chair exerts on me to support me, all right? Because if the chair wasn't there, there would be no force and I would, I would fall down, all right? Same thing, if I go and I throw a ball at this wall, all right, it's gonna hit that wall and that wall is going to, is going to have a normal force or a support force that pushes back on it. So that normal force is going to be perpendicular to that surface. So it's going to be going off this way, all right? Same thing if we have something that is acting on, on a slant, all right? That normal force is going to be perpendicular to the, to the surface there, all right? So wherever the, the surface is, wherever that support is coming from, that's where your normal force is going to be, and it's going to be perpendicular to that surface, all right? The next one is what's called the friction force. So all right, so that friction force is the force that opposes sliding, all right? It's always acting in the opposite direction to the, the movement of that. So for this guy sliding into third base, all right, he's moving this way, 
all right? But the friction force is acting opposite. So that's going to be our force of friction. And the symbol that we use for the force of friction is that F sub FR, all right? Now, along with friction, you have what's called traction, all right? This is the opposite of, of friction, all right? So this is always acting in the direction of motion. Now, here's what we, we have to understand. All right, friction and traction, they happen together, but they don't act on the same object. All right, that's gonna be important when we get going with, uh, with labeling forces. Now, friction and traction, all right, or well, traction, the unit for that is F sub TR. All right, so if I'm looking at this, the idea of, of both friction and traction, in this case, which way is the, is the car going? Well, it's going, it's going to the right here, all right? The friction is happening on the wheels because of the ground or by the ground, all right? So that's happening this way. So that's our force of friction. The force of traction is happening on the ground by the wheels. Do you see the difference between those two, okay? They're, sorry, this is traction, all right? They're, they're happening together, but they're happening on different objects, all right? That's, once again, that's gonna be really important when we start getting into some of this later on. All right, the next one is tension, okay? So you have tension when you have like ropes or chains or cords or muscles or anything like that. I use F sub 10 as the way to, to do that. But um, the, the idea there is if you take a rope and you pull on it, so it's that, that force of tension is in the rope, all right, because something is pulling on it, all right, that's gonna be something we use quite a bit, all right? Next one, we've got air resistance, okay? Air resistance is a type of friction. When air is pushing up against something else as it moves, I use F sub air for the units there. Um, uh, you can also have things like buoyant force, lift force, drag force. We'll talk more about those uh, later on. All right, now we start getting into the forces that happen at a distance. These are forces, these are pushes and pulls that happen without objects needing to be in contact with each other. The one that we use the most often is force due to gravity or, or weight. All right, this is an at a distance force. It comes when two objects that have mass pull on each other, all right? And for when we do this, we always say that, this, that the force of gravity or weight pulls down towards the center of the Earth, all right? Now, one thing to, to do is there's, there's a little bit of um, just, just how do you use the words, all right? The acceleration due to gravity, how things, uh, how fast things accelerate on Earth, all right, is not the same as gravity, okay? Acceleration due to gravity, we use negative 9.8 meters per second every second, but that is not the same as the, the actual force, all right? We'll talk more about that later, but the, the unit that I use or the symbol that I use for this is, is F sub, sub G, all right? Another added distance force is the magnetic force, okay? So this is a, a push or a pull when we have uh, two magnetic poles that are interacting with each other. So like poles, we're talking like north and south, or uh, sorry, if you have two north poles, they are gonna push apart, or if you have two south poles on a magnet, or on magnets, they are gonna push apart. If you have opposite poles, they attract each other, all right? So the, the symbol that we use for that is F sub mag. All right, then you've got the electrical force. This is uh, pushes and pulls that are happening between objects that have an electrical charge. They, they behave in a similar way, like charges, or similar way to magnets, like charges push apart while opposite charges, uh, <laughs> while opposite charges attract, there we go. Um, I use this for the symbol. Now, here's what we wanna do we want to make sure that we know how to label these. So the, the format that we use when we are labeling different kinds of forces is this, all right? It has three parts. First, we label the kind of force that it is, all right? Next, we label what that force is acting on. 
And finally, we label the by or the agent, okay? So we're labeling what is causing that force. So if we have, if we look at this example right here, all right, the force of this punch on the wall, the way that we would do this is we would say, okay, first of all, what kind of force is that? Well, so we're gonna call this, the force that's acting of that punch, we're gonna call that an applied force, all right? Next, what is that applied force acting on? What's the victim here? All right, well, in this case, the victim happens to be the wall. So it's going to be on the wall. And what is exerting that force? Well, it's the fist. So this is the way that we are going to, to label these forces using the, this three-step process where we label the kind of force, what the force is acting on, and what is exerting that force. So let's practice this, all right? So we're gonna use this, uh, this format to label this kind of force. Let's say we've got a surfboard that holds up a shark, all right? So first of all, what kind of, of force is this surfboard exerting on the shark? Well, that's the, the reason the shark is able to be there is because there's a support there, okay? So that's going to be our normal force. So we're gonna say F sub N, okay? And that normal force is acting on what? Okay, well, it's acting on the shark by the surfboard. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so in this one, you are sliding across the ground after you slip and fall. Okay, so let's see here. So the, the force that is acting on you as you slide, all right, that is friction, all right? Remember, so he's going, he's going this way, but friction is acting in this opposite direction. So that is the force of friction on, let's say this is on you, all right? And what's causing that friction? Well, the friction is the ground uh, that, that is rubbing against your face. So by the ground, All right? Okay, so this, this one, a corgi hangs onto a rope. Well, that, that force is a tension force. So we've got tension. Uh, now the force is happening on the rope. And the reason it is happening on there is because that corgi is there. So the force, the tension force on the rope by our corgi. All right, we got that one. Okay, and last one. Let's look at this one, all right? So we've got this, this weight, all right? They're lifting that weight. So that is going to be, so remember, weight is our force due to gravity. All right, so our force due to gravity is acting on, now what are we, should we say that we're talking about the barbell here? All right, is that a barbell or a dumbbell? I think that's a barbell, all right? So on our barbell, and what is it that's causing that barbell to have weight? Well, it's the pull of the earth on that, on that mass. So it's gonna be on the barbell by the earth. Okay. All right, so I think I have enough to make you, to make you dangerous. All right, because what we've got here is, remember, this idea that a force is a push or a pull that's acting on an object. The two main kinds of forces are contact forces when objects are touching, as well as at a distance forces when objects aren't touching. And we've gone over some different examples of those kinds of forces, and we've talked about how uh, to label those. So, like I said, I think I gave you enough to make you dangerous. Let me know if you have any questions.